Um, let me start with the proper recognition of His Excellency, the Governor of Lagos State, Governor Akiu Miyambode. Let me also recognize and congratulate Professor Patutomi on his 61st birthday. And of course, much beyond that, uh, for providing leadership um, to a lot of us who have looked up to him over the years. And of course, to this foundation, which is focused primarily on leadership. Um, I have a great passion for leadership, and um, I also have a similar foundation called the Bridge Leadership Foundation. One day we hope to grow to be as big as CVL. Um, let me also recognize very distinguished personalities here, um, some who have already been duly recognized by the um, Master of Ceremonies. Professor Collier, um, who is our keynote speaker for today, is an authority on many subjects on Africa. But today we're going to be discussing something that I think is going to be an issue moving forward. Over the last few years, we've had various policies, various theories on uh, urbanization, rural migration, moving back to the villages, moving back to the farms, moving up to the cities, and growing the cities. And in recent times, urbanization, which appeared to be something that wasn't so good, now seems to be the driver for the future of development in Africa. If that is the case, as has been propounded by a number of uh, Collier presentations and similar presentations, then the challenge for us first is coming to terms with our present realities. And as Professor Patitomi stated, Lagos presents to us a model that we can look at, not just here in Lagos State, but really in Nigeria, on what the benefits that accrue from urbanization or migration from rural areas to urban areas um, could possibly be, but also the tremendous challenges that we will face in managing this mass movement, as it were. Professor Coley estimates that by 2050, uh, migration to urban areas would have tripled. Growths would be rising at six times what it is and what it has been at the past. And unfortunately, the money and the investment that goes with that is not there. And this calls for a certain amount of creativity. And of course, this also presents to the, or brings to the fore many more challenges that we're going to face. Uh, we've talked about relationship challenges. We've talked about, or we will talk about, I believe, infrastructure challenges. Um, finance policy challenges and the role of government, the role of private sector in addressing these challenges. I want to thank the organizers of this event for choosing this particular subject matter for discussion. I also want to thank the governor of Lagos State whose presence here today is key for us. Um, for those of us who used to live in Lagos, and left Lagos to more rural environments um, many years back. Um, we come back to Lagos and we see Lagos differently um, from when we left it. And um, even as a politician, uh, we tend to be given to flattery. 
But I, do, I dare say uh, it wouldn't be flattery if we commend Governor Mbode on the work that he has continued to do and is doing here in Lagos State. <laughs> One of the challenges that Professor Collier has not emphasized, and I'm sure we'll have a chance to talk about it, is a challenge of continuity. It makes such a difference in governance when policies, regulations, legislation, and support are constant and consistent. When governments transit and everything does not collapse because a new governor or a new sheriff is in town. And I think Lagos presents itself as a model um, of that continuity. Uh, on our own part in Cross River, uh, coming what we call, what I, uh, I like to call provincial governments, uh, taking decisions on investment and of course being visionary enough um, to project and invest in the right infrastructure, invest in congestion, because um, the bottom line today is we grew up being told that it was nice to have a home with a green lawn. And everybody now says, no, there isn't enough connectivity. You need to be in a dense population, in a high rise, and all the services provided, and you grow your economy. Now, that is far from what I was taught in school. And probably that is why it's good that we have the younger people here listening to a different theory, a different approach, and a different strategy to urbanization and to growth, and ultimately to economic development. The focus for today, I believe, would be on not just what it takes, but the impact on our economies. Um, in my past life, I was speaking to someone yesterday and I said 40% of the electricity generated in Nigeria is delivered to Lagos State, or should be delivered to Lagos State, an absolute minimum. But if I did that, and when I tried to deliver 40%, it became a political issue. Why is Lagos getting 40% when Sokoto, Calabar, and Yola are not getting 40% of their total available electricity supply? Now, Lagos got 40% of the electricity, but delivered 55% of the total revenues uh, to the utility. So clearly, that investment that was made at a national level, not necessarily all by Lagos State, was a policy decision which had to be taken, but which faced many challenges, and ultimately, I'm not sure whether 40% of the total available electricity in Nigeria today is still being delivered uh, to Lagos State. So there are a number of issues that I believe will be discussed in these sessions. And I think for us who are here, we should all look forward to very, very robust and interesting presentations. I'm looking forward to uh, listening to the renowned professor and the various speakers. So again, I'd like to welcome all of you um, to this session, and I believe that it will be of tremendous benefit. Please enjoy it, and thank you, CVL, for putting this together.